Hey students, I'm here to show you how to take the two pinch pots that you've created and attach them to each other to make the vessel or the body of your teapot. This is going to be the part of the teapot that actually holds the tea. So I have my two pinch pots. I have paddled them and I've smoothed them out with my sponge and I'm satisfied with their overall form so I'm ready to attach them to each other. The other materials that I have here in addition to these are I've got some slip here, I have a needle tool, I've got my wooden tool still, and then I've got this serrate, serrated metal scraper, and I actually have some extra clay here to use to reinforce the seam that I'm going to create when I put these together. I have a paddle, and I've got some newspaper. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my two pinch pots and I'm going to score the contact points. So the areas that are going to touch each other I'm going to make score marks on. So I'm making the score marks using this serrated metal tool. Then I'm going to make them on this one as well. The other option for making score marks is to make tiny ticks going one direction, so making hatch marks and then hatching back in the other direction will make a nice scored surface as well. Now that these are both scored, I'm going to stuff them with dry newspaper. And it's really, really important that the newspaper that you put in here is dry. And it's really, really important that you don't forget this step. Because if you were to put wet newspaper in here, what would happen is your teapot, everything would be going well, or you'd think it was going well, but then your teapot would actually end up collapsing because the wet newspaper would not support it, and it would actually turn the inside of your teapot into slip and make it collapse. So what I just did as I was talking there is I dabbed slip all into my score marks. So you can no longer see any score marks here. They've all been covered in slip, which is going to be nice, and these two pieces are going to secure together easily. The reason you don't want to forget the newspaper at all is because if you don't put newspaper in, your, the body or the vessel of your teapot might collapse, and you do not want that to happen. So right now, I have my two pinch pots. I've scored, I've slipped, I've put some support for stability so that my, my teapot doesn't collapse, and I'm going to squish them together. And when I do that, I'm just going to kind of wiggle them and apply gentle but firm pressure, and I'm gonna kind of rotate and look around for any holes or spaces and kind of push those together more. So now I've got this. And right now, I wouldn't really be able to work with this. So I've got this coil of clay that I made with my extra clay, the extra wet clay. That's what you're going to use this for. You're going to roll a coil, and then you are going to really, really apply pressure and squish it onto your seam all the way around. So you've reached the other end. If you don't have a long enough coil, my coil was too long, you could just use some of this. Just kidding. Um, no, you just make another coil and keep squishing around. So now this is not looking very finished. So without slip, without water, what I'm going to do is start pulling the clay from the coil up on to my pinch pot like this. And I'm closing that seam completely. I'm trying to squish out any little air pockets that might have made themselves. And I'm going to go around the top. And I'm just kind of rolling this here on the table. And I'm working a little bit quickly because this is a video. If I were making a real teapot, I would actually probably take a little bit more time. And do not worry if it seems like your teapot or the vessel of your teapot is kind of collapsing here in the middle or there's a weird indentation. The areas where the slip is squeezing out too much, I'm having trouble pulling the clay because it's hard to manipulate the wet clay, but it's working. So I've gone all the way around now, but it doesn't look amazing yet, but it will in a second. So now I actually have the ability to kind of manipulate this, change its form, make it into what I want it to be. So. I would now look at my sketches and my ideas and 
I would just kind of look at this as an object and see how can I turn this shape into the body or the vessel of my teapot. And I would be doing some visualization right now and I would be looking at my process journal to kind of examine and maybe compare this to my drawings. How, how does this compare? Will this be upright? Will it be like this? Will it be tilted in this direction when it's complete? So I'm doing a lot of visualizing right now and just a lot of mental processing to try to make this look the way I want it to be. And so my teapot is going to be in this vertical orientation like this. And so what I can do now that I've kind of got it into the basic form that I want is I can make that decision by plopping it down and creating a flat base. And then I can continue manipulating this and making the overall form what I want it to be. Um, you could make it more circular. You can really do a lot of things with the clay at this point. It's kind of surprising how much you can move and change it. And that seam won't break if you really, if you really squished it well. So I am finally getting the form that I want. If this, again, were my real teapot, I would probably take another five minutes just perfecting it. But for the sake of this video, this is the vessel of my teapot, and I'm very happy with it. So I would put this on my plasti bat, clean up my tools, and I would wrap this so that it would stay damp until next class when I can start doing my next steps.